Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tighter Insider TV. Welcome into Tighter Insider TV news coming in this afternoon. Alabama Athletic Director Bill Battle has cancer. It's a rare form of blood cancer called multiple myeloma. He was diagnosed with the disease all the way back in the spring of 2014. He's already undergone radiation and chemotherapy. The good news is his doctors say it is not life threatening and he's hoping to be back to work this fall. So that's Really good news, great and we're news, hoping for news. the best recovery for him. For him. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brandon Cameraman in tonight for Gary Harrison. Welcome into Tider Insider TV. Sitting to my right is the one, the only Rodney Orr. And TITV is presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock. You know that. We get Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi. I think that's Gary's yeah, favorite. Yeah, it is. I can understand why. It's good. Uh, two days into the work week. We got plenty to talk about, though. We'll start with the news from yesterday. Charges dropped against Cam Robinson and Hootie Jones. In case you missed it, Robinson and Jones were facing drug charges and gun charges stemming from an arrest in Monroe, Louisiana in May. Yesterday, the district attorney dropped all of those charges, saying there was insufficient evidence to prosecute the two Crimson Tide football players. Rodney, this quickly set off a storm of anti-Alabama rhetoric. A lot of people weren't too happy with this. How do you view the situation? Do you feel like this was football players getting an edge in the legal, in the legal system? No, because, you know, if you've been watching Tider Insider TV, we've had attorneys on. We've talked to law enforcement officials. I have personally. And, you know, they've all told me since the very beginning that they felt like it was a weak case. They did feel like most of these charges would be at least reduced at a very minimum. And I, so I'm not really surprised by what happened. Now, uh, I, I can't say that I sit here and say that I thought everything would be dropped. But again, I, we did think that there would be a significant reduction in the charges. What about for, with the team? Do you feel like there will be a suspension? Or, or how do you feel this plays out with Coach Saban and, and the Alabama football team? Well, the way Nick Saban always handles these matters is it's an internal issue. So, and, and I think that's the way to do it, and I think that's what he'll do this time. I do know that we've seen, or we've seen on Twitter, some of the things that, that the players, Hootie Jones and Cam Robinson, are already having to do. So there's obviously some discipline that they're now uh, taking care of. But, uh, you know, as far as a suspension, I know there's been a lot of speculation about that. But now with the charges being dropped, it could shed a different light on it. We'll just have to see what happens. This was a rough situation from the beginning. It almost seemed to me, I want to get your take on this, like a lose-lose situation. Yeah. Obviously, as bad a situation, you know, as it could be under the circumstances that in the end, charges were dropped. But again, I'm talking about public perception. And some people just said guilty before, you know, as soon as the charges came out. Do you think that was an Alabama, again, an anti-Alabama thing? I do. I think a lot of that was. And I think, too, some people just respond initially to what they see. In other words, a felony, and they automatically assume that there was something that was significant that these guys definitely did. Uh, I mean, obviously, there was some really bad judgment probably used by both players. But, you know, talking to some law enforcement officials, they said, you know, this isn't a, a it's not a red flag. It's a red bomb when there's a report, a police report done that does not include the facts. And the facts are that there weren't just two players in that car. There were four passengers, four people total in there. And that was something that was left out of, of the original report, which, you know, according to law enforcement officials, uh, that's, that's a no-no. That's a major no-no. That's a big fact there. Why weren't those other two people listed? And it brings the entire report into question. you got to imagine, though, that the team will welcome them back Absolutely. with open arms. Great leadership on the team. Well, summer officially started yesterday, but summer camps have been going on for weeks. A good opportunity to get some former Alabama football players back in the area. That includes former All-American linebacker D'Amico Ryans. He was in Bessemer for the D'Amico Ryans and Bo Jackson charity golf tournament. Ryans, a former NFL defense Defensive Rookie of the Year is currently without a team after getting released by the Eagles in February. Despite an already impressive career, Ryans doesn't yet have a Super Bowl championship. And he says that could influence whether or not he continues to play football. Playing for 10 years and never really having a, a legitimate shot at a championship, that's something that as a competitor you always want to go and play on you know, the, the greatest stage. It's like the game seven last night for the Titans. Like, you want to be in that position as a true competitor. That's what you dream about as a kid, playing in a championship game when it's all on the line and trying to get the ring. So that's something I look forward to, to doing. But if it doesn't happen, I'm fine. 
Well, we have to hope for that. I mean, what an impressive start to his career. Another former Tider was in Alabama this weekend. Rashad Johnson's walk on to Champions Camp in Soligent. The camp's in its sixth year, and Johnson, who's about to start his first season with the Tennessee Titans, said it's important to bring this camp back to his hometown every year. It's grown a lot, you know, since the first year that we've done it, now being our sixth year. I mean, we have more sponsors involved, more of my teammates in and out. It seemed like it's uh, just something that everybody looks forward to each and every year. Like, they know it's sometime in June, so every year you can just feel the anticipation coming up for the weekend. I'll say, Rodney, I've been to some other places. It seems like here in Alabama, those players like to come back to the state to hold these camps. Yeah, it's, it's been like that for a while. It's certainly a lot of pride, you know, being here around this program. Well, from former Alabama football players to a current Alabama coach, the Avery Johnson basketball camp was in Tuscaloosa this week. Johnson was joined by Alabama players and coaches in teaching young basketball players about the sport. And you always know with Avery Johnson, he's going to talk about life as well. We want them to go home with some areas uh, in terms of character that they can improve in. We want them to also know that we at University of Alabama, and specifically men's basketball, we believe in education. All right? So we wanted to share. We also believe in hard work. So, yes, we want them to improve with their ball handling and um, being unselfish teammates, but we wanted to also share some character building. Still to come on Tider Insider Television, it's a new era in Alabama baseball. I got a chance to sit down with the new Crimson Tide head coach. We'll hear from him, and we want to hear from you. Give us the calls. We're accepting them like always. Gary's talked about it. This is that time of year when sometimes, you know, we don't get as many calls, so you get a chance to call in right now. Give us a call, 348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. You can also tweet us at hashtag TITV. We want to hear from you and we'll be right back. The only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider and CD, Cider TV, returns right after the break. Please welcome our new baseball coach, Craig Goff. Lots of applause, lots of excitement for the new Alabama baseball coach, Greg Goff. Introduced to the Crimson Tide family on Friday, I had a chance to sit down with Goff this morning, and he addressed an issue we've received a lot of information about here on Tider Insider. It's that scholarship limitations at Alabama. Here's what he had to say. Now, I'm sure you've gotten this quite a bit. The scholarship issue is sure. that the other programs that have a lottery have an extra scholarship, an academic scholarship they can offer that Alabama, Auburn just don't have. Did you discuss that with Bill Battle in the interview process? Did that come up? He just asked me my thoughts, and my thoughts is real plain. You know, there's no disadvantage here. Um, you know, every program I've ever been to has had some limitations. And, uh, you know, we call them challenges, you know. And so we, we just go in and we, we're going to make the best situation possible here. I think if you get caught up in some things that maybe you don't have or uh, maybe the weather or whatever it might be, things that you can't control, then you, you kind of lose sight of what's really important. We're going to hit the ground running. We believe the University of Alabama is a great fit for student athletes. Uh, this great facility that you see here now, Tuscaloosa and the fan base that we have here, why would you not want to come play baseball at the University of Alabama? We aired part one of that interview on WVUA today at 6. Part two will air tomorrow at 6. But let's talk about Greg Goff. Um, obviously, the first week's always the honeymoon period, and, and there's a lot of excitement about him. And, you know, we were talking about it, the, the success he had quickly. We, we actually discussed that in um, the interview I did with him. He's had quick success at both his stops, both at Campbell University and Louisiana Tech, his two prior stops before here. You know Alabama would like to see some of that quick success here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and when you when you look at his track record, uh, um, you know every place he's been, he's taken over programs that uh, obviously were having difficulties, did not have good records, and he's dramatically turned them around record-wise. And I think that I know that some fans were kind of expressed concern that maybe they didn't get a big name coach, but I think a lot of that's just the unknown not knowing necessarily as much about Coach Goff. And, but if you look at his track record and you see that every program he's taken over, how much success they've had over a period of time, I mean, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's what you have to look at. You have to look at the track record. And you're right. Some fans, I think, did bring up, you know, he's coming from Louisiana. Sure, he's had success, but it's a Campbell and Louisiana Tech. That's not the SEC. He's playing tougher competition here. But I asked him about that, and he said, you know what? I believe in my system. Yep. And that's what you want to hear from your coach. They have a system. They have a way that they believe works. They've seen it work at prior stops. 
and they think it'll work, you know, even when the competition is at its highest, which, you know, you could argue the SEC is the highest level of competition. Oh, absolutely. Again, I, you mentioned that perfectly. I mean, all coaches, successful coaches, have a system that they utilize, and you see them through the years. At every stop, it's, it's a very similar. Of course, sometimes you have to make adjustments, and I'm sure he'll make the adjustments to whatever is necessary here. But, you know, again, you look at the system that he's had in place and everywhere he's been, the success has built year by year. Uh, his track record is, is, is certainly proves that they steadily improve and become a very good, solid program. One player he won't have when he gets here to Alabama is former Crimson Tide closer Thomas Burroughs. He's going to the major leagues. Selected as a third-team All-American by the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association, Burroughs finished his junior season with 12 saves and a .95 ERA. That's not bad. He was selected in the fourth round of the Major League Baseball draft by the Seattle Mariners. He signed with the Mariners last week. Burroughs wasn't the only former Crimson Tide athlete to sign a professional contract. A member of the national championship football team put his name on the dotted line. Hear how Kenyon Drake plans to use his time at Alabama in the NFL. And of course, your phone calls. We want them. Call us 348-9882. You can tweet us at hashtag TITV. We'll take them coming up next here on Crimps on Tighter Insider TV right after the break. Coming from Alabama, coming from a program like that, um, my work ethic, my versatility would just give me the ability to uh, put my stuff, my stamp on this game and hopefully be, be one of those guys that Coach Burns goes back and tell those guys, look, every every week, you know, he gets 100 yards. He can be a 1,000 yard back every year. And I feel like that's everybody's goal. 1,000 yard back every year. I don't think that's my goal. I, I wish it was my goal, but yeah. I don't think it's likely. Welcome back to Tider Insider TV again. Gary Harris has the week off. I'm Brandon Cameraman filling in, of course, sitting here with Rodney Orr. And we're going right to the phone lines. We'll start in Birmingham with Bill. Bill, how's it going? Hey, guys. Good evening. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll tide. Hey, uh, who's going to uh, step up for Ryan Kelly? And uh, I also want to know uh, what about uh, what's the issue with Ronnie Clark? And do you think that uh, Big Ben Davis is going to start this year? Well, okay. first, of, first of all, when you look at the offensive line, I think that uh, it, it's a work in progress as we st head into uh, fall camp. I think there's still some, some spots to be determined. But uh, Ross Piercebaker, who started 15 games at left guard last year as a redshirt freshman, he had an outstanding spring switching over to center. I think that certainly he's a guy that made the coaching staff comfortable with, you know, uh, that position. Uh, Lester Cotton's a guy that I think has an opportunity to play either at right tackle, but he, he ended up at, in the spring at, at left guard where I think they think he has a lot of potential. But he also could play right tackle, as I mentioned. Jonah Williams, a true freshman outside at right tackle, is uh, a guy that really had an outstanding spring. And inside you have Shank Taylor is uh, fighting with redshirt freshman Brandon Kennedy at, at, at right guard. And then at left tackle, of course, you have Cam Robinson. Uh, I, I don't remember what were exactly his other questions. I actually didn't hear the second question, too. Is Bill still with us? Ben Davis and Ronnie Clark. Yeah, Ronnie Clark, of course, running back who uh, tore, tore his Achilles for the second time. And, again, that's a difficult injury to overcome. And, you know, you certainly hate that for him because he had made a lot of progress in the spring. So we'll have to see how quickly he can return. As far as Ben Davis from Gordo, the freshman, outstanding linebacker prospect, I think he's got an opportunity to play this year. Uh, certainly on special teams, he's, he's extremely athletic. And I think, Brandon, one thing you have to look at Alabama's inside linebacker depth. That could give some of these freshmen, like Ben Davis especially, maybe Mac Wilson, uh, an opportunity to get on the field. Never enough linebackers. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Harold and Anderson. Harold, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. Hey, uh, Ryan, I got a question for you, man. You know, I, I really uh, uh, respect and, uh, uh, our coach, Nick Stable, man. And my question to you is, man, you know we got more than our share of haters, man, but, but being number one like we are, man, and – do you think Coach ever just sometimes, man, gets tired of people trying to tell him how to run his program? I'm talking about as far as, uh, you know, the thing with the two players and everything and everybody's got their opinion. Right? Don't you think Coach sometimes gets tired of people trying to tell him how to run his program? Well, I'm sure that it can become aggravating because, it, you know, any time that you run a business, run a program, run an organization, certainly I think that kind of thing can wear on you if you allow it to. But I really don't think he allows that to really bother him too much, Harold. I think he knows – the direction he's headed and he tries to handle things obviously in the best way for the program and the organization and I think that 
when you look at that, I, I'm not really sure he worries about too much about what he refers to as clutter on the outside. So I think that uh, Harold, while it may be a little bit of a nuisance, I, I don't think he allows it to bother him too much. He's pretty comfortable with his reputation at this point, I think. We'll go to email. We have an email from Douglas in Western Massachusetts. Douglas asks, asks about former Alabama commitment Kendall Jones. Jones is now headed to junior college. He wants to know if it's possible he could end up back at Alabama. Rodney? Well, is it possible? Yes, it's, it's possible. The defensive lineman from uh, Colleen, Texas, there you see him making the sack. But, you know, again, that's, that's two years away, and uh, I, you know, it's difficult to say right now. If I had to guess, though, probably not. All right, well, we'll get back to your phone calls, emails coming up in the next block. Trent Richardson's quest to get back into the NFL took a harsh turn this past week. We'll have the details on that. And again, more of your phone calls, emails, tweets. We'll take them all coming up next on Tighter Insider TV. Stay with us. Former Alabama running back Trent Richardson is facing arthroscopic knee surgery. Richardson, who's trying to make it back into the NFL with the Baltimore Ravens, is expected to miss some time, which could affect his chances of making the team. Well, let's go right back to the phone lines. John has a question about the defense. John. Um, yes, sir. How y'all doing this evening? Good. How are you, John? Uh, yes, sir. Doing good. I was just wondering, how y'all think um, the defense is going to be this year? Well, John, I think it's going to be – has an opportunity to be outstanding. I, I think when you look at some of the guys that return up front, uh, we could name several of them, Dalvin Tomlinson, Jonathan Allen, who was an, uh, an All-American last year, Deron Payne, uh, Deshaun Han, I think is going to have a really big year. And Josh Frazier's really had a good offseason from what I understand. They're going to be solid up front. Uh, Ryan Anderson, Tim Williams also on the outside. Reuben Foster's back. They've got a lot of talent in the secondary. I think they've got a chance to be really good again this year. It might be a little bit different. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I really am excited to see uh, the Jeremy Pruitt influence on this defense. You said it might be a little bit different. Is that largely because of Pruitt or because of personnel? Well, I, I think some of it could be because of personnel. I, I think this defense could be a little bit faster maybe than what we've seen in the past. When you look at all the guys uh, you know, across the front, I, I think they could have better speed maybe than what we've seen and some of the linebackers. And I'm really excited to see how Rashawn Evans goes from the spring into a fall camp because he had an outstanding spring at inside linebacker for a guy who's just making that, that transition. Had 32 tackles and three scrimmages, including the 17 that he had in A-Day. Now, there's a lot of things that he – Coach Saban made it clear, a lot that he has to learn. But uh, he's a guy that could really – uh, add something defensively in terms of speed on the inside. All right, BT's waiting for us. BT, how are you? I'm fine. Brandon, Rodney, how about you? We're doing good. Uh, Rodney and Brandon, uh, what, what, what do you think kind of percussion will be taken? Well, you know, BT, we addressed that a little bit earlier. It's, it's always difficult to say, and, you know, it's a, it's a matter that we think uh, as always, Coach Saban will handle internally. Obviously, they're already doing some things disciplinary-wise to uh, uh, for this situation, uh, and uh, so I, I just think that right now it's it's really be really difficult in terms of providing specifics, and uh, I don't know that we'll ever really know. We'll have to see. An, e an email. We'll go back to the email. An email from Gary. I don't think it's Gary Harris. He's on vacation. <laughs> he wants to know what we think of Jim Harbaugh's disrespect for Nick Saban. Of course, this is going back to the whole satellite camp thing. There was social media involved with this. Uh, you know, Saban came out last week and said that he has nothing against Harbaugh, and Harbaugh can run the camps the way he wants to run it, run his program the way he wants to run it. Do you think there's anything there? Is there a budding rivalry growing between the two? Well, uh, you know, I don't know what Harbaugh's deal is. He's a kind of a different bird, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I don't quite understand the, the head football coach at the University of Michigan conducting himself on Twitter sometimes the way Jim Harbaugh does. But you know what? That's just kind of the way he is, and I think sometimes the best thing to do is let that guy be whoever he is and do your thing and not really pay a lot of attention to it. And I think, you know, again, we're going back to uh, Saban. He's comfortable with where he is. I don't think he yeah, lets absolutely. outside voices like Jim Harbaugh get to him. Well, still to come, Robert Ory is no longer the last Alabama basketball player to win an NBA championship. We'll talk about the latest NBA champion from the Crimson Tide. Keep it with us on the only show that takes you right inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV is com coming up right after the break. It was 52 years for the city of Cleveland to win a championship in any professional sport. 
It was nine years for a former Alabama player to win an NBA title. Robert Ory did it in 2007, and now Mo Williams is an NBA champion as the Cleveland Cavaliers took down the Golden State Warriors in seven games. Williams had nine points, three rebounds, and three steals in the seven games, but you know with that Crimson Tide education, he was there as a good leader in the locker room. Well, of course, our beautiful shirts, this time I get to wear a shirt from the locker room, and it is really awesome. I got to go in there uh, on Monday and really loved Alex Gaywood and everything thing they had there a great store you got to go by and see it their new location in downtown Tuscaloosa just absolutely beautiful we'll be at Buddy's Ribbon Steak in Northport tonight feel free to drop by and don't forget if you miss any of tonight's shows you can catch the replay at 10 30 after the news at 10 and of course always online at WVUATV.com for Rodney Orr I'm Brandon Cameron thanks for tuning in Gary Harris will be back next week have a good night